Wikipedia defines technology as the collection of techniques, methods, or processes used in the production of goods or services, or in the accomplishment of objectives. Which is a very boring, robotic way of defining the human species' incredible method of cheating evolution. Think about it, birds spend millions of years evolving the ability to fly. Us humans skipped all that and build airplanes. But what's really interesting is in the process of cheating natural evolution, we've sparked the evolution of technology. Now, at this point, I'd love to show you technology's evolutionary tree, but unfortunately, the world of human-made technology is so incredibly vast and filled with inventions, this would be close to impossible. For example, look around you right now. Everything from the shirt on your back to the screen you're watching this on is technology. So if counting every species of technology in this room alone would be that difficult, imagine that on a global scale. It's obvious we can't cover the evolution of technology as a whole, so instead, let's focus on the pinnacle of human innovation, the computer. Many people don't realize this, but a computer is actually the sum of thousands of different technologies coming together, each of which has their own story to tell. So today, I'll be taking apart this broken iBook G4 to showcase these incredible components. Keep in mind this G4 is over 12 years old, so many of its components will look quite different than those that can be found in newer computers, but the basic functions are still the same. First off, let's discuss some of the exterior bits, like the LCD screen, the thin chiclet or scissor switch keyboard, and the clamshell design. An LCD display utilizes the light modulation properties of liquid crystals to produce images. Liquid crystals don't actually produce light, but when an outside light source shines through them in the correct way, vibrant colors can be created. The technology behind the LCD was first discovered in 1888 by Frederick Ryanser, who extracted liquid crystals from a carrot and discovered they had some interesting light modulation properties. However, it wasn't until 1970 that this technology was actually applied to a display that even remotely resembles those that we have today. This innovation came from a fellow by the name of Hoffman LaRoche, who created a very simple LCD display for watch faces. These displays were fairly similar to the LCD screens that can be found on most digital watch faces today, and were extremely revolutionary for the time. Now, 45 years later, we have 4K OLED displays, with pixel densities rivaling the detail the human eye can even perceive. Next, the keyboard. Although this invention certainly isn't as incredible as the LCD display, it has an interesting story to tell. Our modern day keyboards are based on the original QWERT design by Christopher Latham Scholes. This design was originally structured to help stop typewriter jams, and although modern day computers obviously don't have this problem, the design stuck. Typewriter keyboards, as well as the majority of modern keyboards, are actually mechanical keyboards meaning there is a mechanical switch under the key that manages key acceleration and detection. However, the ultra-thin keyboard featured on this iBook is what's known as a scissor switch keyboard. This means there are small rubber filaments with plastic supports under each key. These keyboards provide a thinner and more bouncy feel than classic mechanical keyboards. The first keyboard to utilize a type of scissor switch was the TRS-80 color computer keyboard in 1980. This keyboard actually received awful reviews due to the strange feedback provided by the keys. However, after many years of revision, these keyboards can now be found on the majority of laptops on the market, and even in some desktop keyboards. Next, let's have a look at the outer shell of the machine itself. This iBook, like all laptops, uses a clamshell design, where the screen folds down to cover the keyboard for portability. This design was originally thought of by Grid Systems in 1982. Their clamshell laptop, the Grid Compass 1001, was the first ever to utilize this design, which changed the design of portable computers forever. Quickly, the new design took over, and it became hard to find a portable computer that didn't utilize a clamshell design. Alright, now that we've covered the outside of the machine, let's get into the fun stuff! First thing we'll look at is the battery. This iBook, like the majority of portable electronics these days, utilizes a lithium-ion battery. These batteries are great due to their rechargeability compared to other batteries. Lithium-ion batteries produce energy by rapidly bouncing electrons back and forth within the battery. The energy produced by these movements is what powers our devices. The lithium-ion battery was first proposed in the 1970s by a man named M.S. Whittingham. Whittingham's first prototype, the Varda, was highly unsafe and unstable, due to how hard lithium actually is to work with. It took hundreds of scientists, chemists, and engineers 
30 years to finally produce a stable lithium ion battery, which would be safe for consumer sale. It wasn't until 1991 that Sony released the first lithium ion battery, which quickly became quite popular. Next is the RAM, or memory. Even Apple understands how important it is to have easy access to a computer's RAM, so this area is nicely tucked under the keyboard. RAM stands for Random Access Memory, and is a very important component which works hand in hand with the CPU. This iBook has a whopping 512 megabytes of RAM. RAM stores data that the processor may need to access quickly, such as your operating system, any applications you have open, or any background tasks your computer is running. RAM can be compared to a person's short-term memory, things someone is actively thinking about, talking about, or acting on, while a computer's main storage can be compared to someone's long-term memory. If I launch an application I have saved to my computer's main storage, it will be moved to RAM for quicker accessibility by the CPU, much like recalling something you were previously thinking about. Early computers used relays, which were mechanical counters to store simple data that needed to be accessed by the CPU. These relays could not randomly access data, and instead would just read the data in the order it had been written. It wasn't until 1947 that true random access memory started to surface, the most prominent of which was magnetic core memory, which saved data by shifting magnets around to represent bits. Magnetic core memory was the standard up until around 1970, when solid-state RAM was invented by Robert H. Dennard. Robert's design is what all modern RAM is based on. However, we've improved the storage size and write speed of these components exponentially. Now, as we all know, Apple despises people tampering with their devices. So this next step is like prying open an armored tank. Now that we've exposed the internals here, let's have a look at one of the few mechanical parts in most PCs, the hard drive. Hard drives store data on thin magnetic disks known as plotters. These plotters contain millions of small magnetized particles that manipulate a magnetic tip on the plotter's reader to access the data. The first ever hard drive was invented by IBM in 1956. Known as the IBM 350, this massive stack of plotters contained only about 600 megabytes of storage. To put that in perspective, it would take about 1600 IBM 350s to make up a gigabyte. A terabyte is a thousand gigabytes. My computer has about four terabytes of storage. The storage drives in my computer can fit in my pocket, while the same amount of storage from an IBM 350 would fill up a house. This large piece of circuitry here is known as the motherboard. A motherboard is the central circuit board in any computer that allows different components to communicate properly with each other. On newer machines, most of these components are separate from the motherboard, like the central processing unit, or CPU, and the graphics processing unit, or the GPU. However, on this super compact motherboard, these components are more built in. This iBook uses a 300 MHz PowerPC G3 microprocessor. Even though this microprocessor is almost 15 years old, it's still a mind-blowing little component. Microprocessors are primarily composed of microscopic elements known as transistors. A single chip can have as many as 20 billion transistors, all firing like neurons as you use your computer. The first ever microprocessor was designed by Intel in 1971. Known as the Intel 4004, this processor contained only about 2300 transistors. These little chips were extremely revolutionary, and were known for delivering the same computational power of computers that would fill up a room. Since the Intel 4004, the power that can be packed into a microprocessor has increased literally billions of times. So, we've just condensed millions of hours of work from thousands of different extremely intelligent people into a 10 minute film. Because of this, we've truly only brushed the surface of how amazing these machines truly are. And if we keep on this track, they'll soon be even more advanced. Someday, human innovation will surpass the capabilities of natural innovation. The human brain sure had a good run, I suppose.